So yeah, uh, I was here once earlier this year with a pet cemetery story, and uh, I enjoyed doing that for you, so I decided I'd like to continue to do stories. And this is a shorter version of a larger story that uh, I would like to do in the future. But she needed to fill in a date today, and I said, well, I can make this a short presentation, and that's what it will be. And so with the title, again, as you can read, is The Heartfelt Memories of a Clinton Engine. Well, of course, the engine doesn't have any memory, but I do. <laughs> and this is my story. And so, uh, again, this is my family, my son Matthew, my daughter Melissa, my wife Colleen, who also grew up in Elwood, and myself. This is my parents, Henry and Mary Scott, who lived south of Elwood at the time that they retired from farming, and they are both deceased and buried in the Lost Nation <coughs> Cemetery. And uh, this is the farm where I grew up, south, about 13 miles southwest of Makokada. And there's another picture of it. When we lived there in 1969, that's what it looked like. And this were the pictures of my farming days. Uh, the picture on the on that side with the collie dog. That's my two brothers, Lauren, much taller than I, and my younger brother Lyle, and myself holding the pig. And then the calf is myself. That was the first calf that my dad let me raise before I was even in 4-H that I, I raised and uh, started my farming career. And of course, I graduated high school in Lost Nation, school in Lost Nation. This was about the time that I was in seventh grade. And the uh, educational system we had then, I, uh, they were telling us about four cycle engines and two cycle engines that you see on the shelf over there. And I went home to my dad and I asked him, I said, it's great to learn about these in a book, but I'd like to learn how an engine operates. What I want to see one core part. And uh, one of the things I was getting involved in it in the junior high, of course, I was in 4-H. And 4-H uh, is fun, friends, voice, and choice. And, and its mission, it empowers youth to reach their full potential working and learning in partnership with caring adults. Well, that would be parents and leaders. And so 4-H uh, played a big part of my life. And it filled the gap where a high school education couldn't because they didn't have hands-on learning abilities at that time. And being a new member to 4-H in those early days, it was called Learn by Doing, and it's still the model today. You learn by doing. And there I did. Dad had to go to Makoka to one day in the spring, and he had to go to Rosenberg Auto Supply to get parts. And, and he said, do you think you could bring me home an engine that I could tear apart? So we talked to Jack Rosenberg, and he went out in the backyard where they... <laughs> Top price is paid for junk, <laughs> and that's what I got. That's per pretty much, I don't have the actual picture of it, what I had to go home with that day, but it was pretty much an engine on lawnmower, an ordinary lawnmower like you used to push to cut grass. This one was powered by a small engine. Montgomery Wards and Sears would sell that model. He brought it home, and I said, what, what am I going to do with that? Well, I quickly learned to get the tools, and Dad bought me the tools I would need to learn how to tear that engine apart, and also how to put it back together again. And I found a book in the library, which is there, it's this one. And by golly, in this book, it had a picture of an engine tore apart. So there they are, that's the motor all in pieces. And guess what? That was my motor. That is a Clinton engine in that, in that picture. I had an exact engine. And there's one very similar on the shelf, on the lower shelf over there, that is just like that one. And so uh, I knew every single part of what made that engine run. And I learned it 
by doing, by taking it apart and putting it back together again. I wanted to bring up these other pictures of the farm that I grew up on again. This small little building over there is where I tore the engines apart. And in this picture, it's this building right here. And uh, half of this building was a chicken house. The other half I made into a little machine shop so I could fix lawnmowers and whatever else came in there. We also had rabbits. What did we have for rabbits? <laughs> <laughs> and so I took that engine apart and put it back together. And, and the night, I believe it was a cold <clears throat> evening in April, before, just before you were ready to go to the field and plow, and Dad got done milking cows, and we stood out between the house and that little building, and I had it put together, and I had it all done the way the book said to put it back together, and it was a rope start. You had to wrap a rope around the pulley so you could pull it. didn't have a recoil on it. And it was 10 o'clock at night, and I was so excited. I was probably in seventh grade. We wrap the cord around the rope around it and give it a pull and it'd go pop. And we did that several times and finally it took off. And it took off. We were scared. It jumped back and sure enough, it fell over and died. I said, I've got to make a platform for this thing. How are we going to hold it up? Well, we put the rope on again and I held it steady and it ran for about five minutes and I was just bursting in tears because it worked. And so uh, the first thing we did with it, I made, got home from school the next day. I went to the lumber yard in Lost Nation, and I bought some wood for it because I made a stand so it wouldn't fall over no more. And then I got some spray paint, and we spray painted it brand new silver color. And uh, it sat there until July when Lost Nation had its 4-H days. I took it to the fair. And my mother is so good about saving all these clippings over the years and that's what helped me write the story today because she brought my past back to life and I found the clippings about all the things that we kids had done through high school and it said that uh, the judges for the 4-H club show were John Henderson well that's Mr. Master Gardener over at the other museum and I was and Norman Goodwin he was the extension director in Clinton County and so, way down at the bottom, some of you probably can't see it, but there it was. I got second place red for my engine that I had tore apart. And uh, I never had done anything like that before. I knew Mike Novak he had two much larger engines, and this was his third or fourth year, so I felt pretty good I got the red ribbon. But the, the next question came to mind was, I got this engine. What are we going to do with it? What can it do? <coughs> so I, I saw both. This was, of course, you know John Henderson, if you remember. And this is Norman Goodwin. He ended up being, uh, he worked in the legislature there in, from Clinton County, maybe this part too. But I admired these two people because they were not only my judges, they became my friends. Because I went like them attended college and it was their inspiration to be a judge. How did they get to do that? I wanted to be like them. So, I went too fast. Gave away my secret. Anyway, <laughs> after the engine was judged at, that county, at the county fair and I went to DeWitt County Fair, it came to mind of what we're going to do with the engine. I asked my dad, he said, well, I always wanted to see if I could, if he could make a vacuum pump. So he didn't have to milk the cows by hand when electricity got shut off. So we took the little one horsepower engine and I built, attached it to a vacuum pump that he went over to Oxford Junction and uh, $35 put it together on a stand and hooked it together and we could milk cows with my little gasoline engine that came from Clinton Engines. <laughs> and uh, so, again, what the clipping says, of four, I was 14 years old, won a blue ribbon at the county fair with the portable gas engine. 
to run a milking machine. It was also entered in the WMT Farm Gadget Show from WMT Radio Station, sponsored a gadget show right next to the Livestock Pavilion. And I never exhibited anything that far away. Went all the way to Des Moines and Hassel and put it up and stayed overnight in a motel. Never did that before. <laughs> and uh, by golly, they judged it. And one of the judges was actually somebody that Dad knew many years ago from Scott County. But uh, made no difference that way. But I ended up winning first place in the junior division with this ribbon. Well, once, once you won first place in that division, they threw it in the senior division, and I got a fourth place ribbon for that. Because we could milk cows with a gasoline engine and take it out to the pasture and hold her the cow, and you didn't have to bring her to the barn when she had a baby calf, and that's what we did. We could use it. And so uh, I'm going to pass around this clipping. <laughs> You can see an up close version of that milking machine. And so that was the first trip that engine made and that milking machine made to the state fair. And you can see, not a very clear picture, you'll see it on the, the other one, but that was the engine. This is the vacuum pump, this is a reservoir. You need 15 pounds of vacuum to run a milking machine, 13 to milk the cow. The stand that it's all sitting on is the stand from the lawnmower platform that came from Rosenberg's. The stand went underneath, that was a radio flyer wheels of a radio flyer coaster wagon. This was the one stand, that's the set of wheels. It was just stuff that we had laying around to make it work. And uh, work it did. Of course, we go to Iowa State for the first time in 1970. We stayed for a country show, Johnny Cash. And it was so memorable because he had a song where he was singing about to train. And at the time, the Iowa State Fair would take you around the State Fair on a little choo choo train. And as he was singing his song, Here Come the Train. Toot, toot, toot. And those are just memories that are very fond for me. So there's another picture. Also took the once I put it together and knew what I had, I gave a demonstration at the 4-H and learned how to talk in front of people and told them my basic story, what I had just told you a long time ago. And as I say, we grew up on a dairy farm, so I also showed dairy cows, which is really my passion and my hobby. But uh, that particular year, I won grand champion with the Holstein cow. And again, the picture here that we'll be passing it around. The judges at the fair in Clinton County sent my project back to the state fair a second time. Only this time it was in the 4-H division in a mechanical engineering department. So it loads it up in the truck in 1971 and it goes back where I was showing cattle. Didn't fare so well, the judges didn't like it. Got a fourth place white ribbon, but it was okay. Because I met a lot of people that last a lifetime. And once you milk the cows, there's the bucket. Put the milk in the bucket. And this could be actually a picture of my dad at the time we did this. We didn't have a milk cooler, so the milk went into cans. But that wasn't the last trip. Now I go back to high school, eighth grade, I tell my science teacher who was Mr. Rowall from Wheatland. He was my, and I was working on a science fair project that I couldn't get the results I needed. And somebody mentioned to him that I had already had this project <coughs> completed. So we entered it. <laughs> in the science fair in Augustana College in Moline, Illinois, or Rock Island, I guess it is. And by all, I got an honorable mention ribbon again. So I got to go to Rock Island two years in a row, two different projects, but I learned to uh, 
appreciate doing things outside of school and in school. And uh, just happened this picture was in the that in the DeWitt paper after it went to the state fair. Floyd Marks on the other side is my cousin. He had a woodworking project go the same time. And uh, a side note of that was when the project when the projects were uh, loaded up to go from Clinton County in DeWitt, my uh, uncle Harold Cruz took all the projects in the back of his Ford truck and it was packed full. It had all the projects that needed to go from the fair house and he took them to, out to the fair where I was showing cattle and unloaded and helped him with that. And That was in August of course and October 31st he died. <laughs> So that's just a real good memory. Uh, anyway, that was my little presentation. It started here in Makokota with a small engine, and it took me places that I've never been before. Yeah. Where is the engine now? It didn't make it through a flood in our basement. <laughs> so I had to discard it. I, I wanted to save it, but it, it wasn't usable anymore. <laughs> So, any questions about that part? Yeah? I just want to make a comment. So many parents these days think that that's too much trouble. And, and your father said, here's a motor, take it apart. I mean, parents aren't doing that these days. And look where it took you. Yeah. So I just yep. want to say thank you. Lucky started you. Grew up with you. Thank you. That's how I feel. I mean, that's how ours went, too. But it doesn't happen today. No. I asked my son if he knows how an engine works, and he has no idea. He'd have to go to vocational school to find out. Well, now they do have a small engine class at the high school. Okay. okay. But it was pretty cool. Absolutely. Well, i got some other stories to tell. If anybody has anything else they want to ask about that, and I can show you the engine over there that's poss possibly like the one I had that I did. And I want to read a couple things here. My mother wrote a story for a farm magazine, oh heck, three years ago. And it goes like this. My rendezvous with wheels. I grew up and lived on a farm until I graduated from high school, but I was what you'd call a city slicker farm girl. My dad was a believer in the women belong in the house, so I didn't have a chance to do any farm chores or have any machinery experience. Before I got married, my husband asked if I would like to be a farmer's wife, and I said, yep, that's what I wanted to be. I really didn't realize there were so many things involved when I gave the affirmative answer, like feeding pigs, sorting pigs to sell always almost on a rainy day, feeding cows and bucket feeding calves, and then to learn how to drive any vehicle was really something else. We hadn't been married too long and I found out a farmer's wife must learn to drive. My husband always enjoyed lunch in the afternoon when he was working in the field and so that, and so to get experience I was to drive the car out where he was working. I had practiced a little by driving around the yard and was a and here was a chance for me to go in a lane which was fenced on both sides. I drove out to the field fine keeping the car on the hard surface but coming back with something else. There was a corner to turn and I got too close to the post and scratched up the left side of my husband's new car. <laughs> I knew my husband would be mad when he saw the scratch on the new car we were both so proud of. So I pulled it over by the barn with the right side to be seen first when he came in from the field. There I was, sitting in the hot sun. And he never liked to have it sit out, so I decided I'd better put it in the garage. It was a two-car garage with a middle post. And we always parked the car on the left stall. I pulled across the yard and drove it 
drove the car in at an angle, and there I was, wedged in the garage, cornerwise, with the left side. When my husband came home, he couldn't believe what he saw. He did a lot of maneuvering around to get the car out, and when he saw the dents, not on one side, but on both, he was pretty angry with me. <laughs> now, if that wasn't enough, the next thing I was to drive was the tractor, which I thought would be real fun and something like a car to drive, but I soon found out different. There were so many numbers and letters on the shift and the throttle was on the steering wheel instead of the gas pedal on the floor, you had to use the throttle to keep the motor running when starting to move. <coughs> we had a cow that just had a set of twin calves in the field, so my husband informed me it was easier for him to get them home if we take the tractor and the nurse spreader. <coughs> He'd put the calves in the spreader and the cow would follow if I drive the tractor. Away we went to the field through the same lane I had taken the car in. We put the calves in the manure spreader and started for home when him, with him riding with the calves. He said I'd have to pull over to the right so the manure spreader could make the corner, but with the throttle wide open and slow manipulation of turning, you guessed it, I went through the fence. The tractor came in to an abrupt halt. The calves were stunned and there was oil spraying all over. I had hit the oil line on the side of the tractor and broke it. Even though I had a few trials and tribulations in learning to master the driving of vehicles, who is it they call upon to do the chasing when they have a breakdown? You guessed it, just little old me. <laughs> That was a cute little story. Pretty good, pretty good. And lastly, I wanted to show you what I had found in the newspapers lately. And I'll pass these around. This is a clipping that was in the Quad City Times in 1942. And this picture is a John Deere tractor pulling a John Deere tie wire baler with my dad's uncle driving the tractor and my dad's cousin standing beside the baler tying the wire tie on the baler. Well that was in 1942 and uh, it was right outside of Maquoketa between Maquoketa and Baldwin on Highway 64. I thought that was pretty cool. Many or some of you may know Connie Patridge. She comes to Brown Bag Lunches once in a while. That's her grandfather and her uncle. Well then I found that story three or four years ago, but here recently, <laughs> like two months ago, I came across another story in the Quad City Times paper, and this one is of my grandfather, Lester Scott and Henry Scott being brothers. This picture is taken in 1948 in Scott County, Iowa. 60 miles south of here by the same newspaper reporter in the same newspaper where he was plowing the first furrow for conservation tillage when he put in his contour strips in Scott County, Iowa. And so I clipped these two out because that's two brothers written by the same paper, the same people, eight, six years apart and 60 miles apart. That's all. Thank you for listening. <laughs>